I'm oftentimes asked whether it is a good position to be going against the crowd, as it would hold to reason that two brains are smarter than one, and therefore thousands of people sharing thoughts should come to a better conclusion than any individual person. However, today I'm going to go into the details of why crowds consistently get decisions wrong, and also why they sometimes make very obvious mistakes, so stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian. If you're new here, my name's Logan. I really like to talk about overall success in investing, but also going against crowd thinking mentality within the investing world and uh, in life in general. Um, I like to talk about topics like this, so if you like these kinds of videos, uh, just hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I also want to make a disclaimer that none of this is to be taken as financial advice, as I'm not a financial advisor. So to begin with, I want to make it clear that in many instances, groups can come to a better conclusion and decision or outcome than an individual thinking on their own. And obvious examples of this would be in business. Um, a business bringing together uh, experts in different fields and executives, and they combine this into a perfect team that is able to create such a dominant business. Great example of businesses right now like this might be Amazon or Facebook or you could pretty much name whatever dominant business you want, but businesses do this uh, very well. After all, the advantage of a business may have is mainly due to all of the social resources it has within it. And this is a major factor I consider when looking at an investment. Also, even crowds of randomly selected people can often come close to getting an answer correctly. Uh, for example, it's been proven that with, you know, an example of guessing the weight of a large animal of a large group of people, it'll oftentimes give an average response that is very close to the actual number. Um, you know, people overestimate, people underestimate, and the average of these responses comes fairly close to the actual answer. Um, yeah, so this Psychology Today did a study on this. It basically says that, yeah, they can come to these basic decisions, um, but oftentimes with more complex decisions, they are prone to lead us astray. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to discuss more nuanced decision-making among groups of people. And um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to try to answer the question of why is it that large groups of people oftentimes make very obvious mistakes when given a question or problem to solve. And good examples from the business world would be past inst instances um, in bubbles forming. And a great uh, bubble that's a good example of this is the housing crisis that occurred in 2008. Uh, what many people don't realize is this was a long process that led to this giant collapse, uh, both with the investment banks and in the housing market. And this was not some sudden black swan type of event that caused this crash. Rather, it was a prolonged period of years of bad decisions gradually building on top of each other, and then these same institutional investors making gradually worse and worse mistakes that led to such a bad, irreversible collapse. But the remarkable thing about this event is that very few people in the world of finance saw it coming. If anything, it was only the people on the outside of the large corporate world who could actually see what was going on. And this really leads into the first reason of why crowds make bad decisions. It is because of bias. Uh, in the 1950s, the Harvard psychologist uh, Solomon Ash demonstrated that people frequently adopt the view of the majority even when it is obviously wrong and even when they have to deny their own senses. In the same decade, Reed Tudenham of the University of California found that his students would give ridiculous answers to simple questions, stating, for example, that male babies have a life expectancy of 25 years when they thought others had answered in the same way. So you hopefully can begin to see why employees and individuals in, say, Lehman Brothers or Bear Stearns would not have wanted to have gone against what they were being told. It was merely because they were not encouraged to do this. You know, if anything, they were incentivized to just keep feeding into this already agreed upon decisions that um, turned out to be disastrous. And if anything, the internet has mo only made this kind of thinking dynamic much worse. Now, whatever opinions we talk about can be seen by virtually anybody. 
So with social media and all this connection the internet has given people to each other, it has only exacerbated this already bad phenomenon within groups. In the same article, um, we think the internet as an information superhighway. It's not. It's a biased superhighway. Um, yeah, Twitter and Facebook are wonderful ways of sharing information, but it may be that because we're sharing our prejudice, they're making us dumber. Uh, so this leads into the third and final reason of why crowds are often phenomenally bad at decision making, and this is precisely because individuals underestimate themselves. They think that because they might not be an expert at something, they should therefore leave it in the hands of those who have studied this certain area and appear to know what they are doing. And watch how I say appear to know what they are doing, because oftentimes these experts do not know what they are doing, or they, you know, are very outdated in their methodology behind it. And such an example would also be from the housing crisis in 2008, when banks were simply buying mortgage CDOs because of the rating agencies repeatedly rating them, you know, much higher than they actually were. And uh, a housing crisis had never happened before, so you know they just they viewed these CDOs as very safe investments when in reality they were much more risky than was being priced in. So these banks actually failed to look into what they were buying. And they failed to look into the rating agencies and actually seeing if they were being honest. And yeah, I think we can all see how that ended. Um, people frequently adopt the view of the majority even when it is obviously wrong. So yeah, um, now this same dynamic applies to many things that have happened before and since 2008. Um, the same you know, bias within group members and groups of people just wanting to not be seen as weirdos and not wanting to be seen as outsiders. This same kind of dynamic applies to many things that have happened before 2008 and since then. I'm not just trying to say that this only applies then. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but current decisions that I think the crowd could be getting wrong uh, would be, one example would be uh, assets such as index funds. And in this example, investors are simply mindlessly jumping into index funds without questioning what is in them, you know, are these good valuation companies, are they, you know, are they going to be growing? Um, I covered this in my previous videos about a potential index fund bubble, but this, you know, index indexing and all these ETFs, this essentially removes price discovery from the markets, and this has the potential to inflate asset prices far beyond their justified valuations. And this, in my mind, is just a repeat of 2008 all over again with stocks instead of CDOs. And another thing that we'll probably know more about in the coming weeks is the fallout of the 2020 election. Um, and right now the entire media is just mindlessly running around calling Biden the president-elect, and everyone has pretty much simply accepted this as a past event. Um, however, I will be curious to see what the final outcome of this is. Uh, in my opinion, there are actually many more cards that I think the Trump team will pull out uh, that could potentially overturn this. But my main reason for skepticism with the whole election outfall is just uh, how much smoke the media is throwing at this right now. It it appears that they're trying to cover up um, something rather than just reporting on things, um, whether that be with the legal fights or the state legislatures or whatever. They're just they're giving a lot of noise to things that really aren't much significance, and they're really not giving anything to things that are a lot more significant, such as the video of Georgia. Just um, It was just released. But anyway, it makes me think that they're just trying to cover up something. Uh, but we'll definitely have a better idea of how this example turns out in a few weeks. Uh, so I hope these examples really show all of you watching this why you need to question crowd thinking and the common narratives thrown out there. Um, you really need to question and verify what the media and these financial gurus are recommending, as oftentimes it is simply not true, or it's exaggerated, or it's completely false. Uh, and the real reason why history always repeats itself is that people fail to realize that they're making these same past mistakes that have already happened. And I really don't want myself or you to fall into the same mistakes as the crowd out there. Uh, me personally, I basically accept the fact that history is going to repeat itself and that the crowd will fall into this, but I don't want to get caught into this. 
Uh, so yeah, anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this. Um, what I just mentioned of why crowds are phenomenally bad at making decisions and questioning uh, common narratives, and I hope to see you again.